So the other day when I was packing for a short trip, I was looking through all the cards in my wallet and realized that by far, this card sees the least use. And that's not a dig to Schwab or anything because when I got home, I had to dig through my drawers in order to even find my other debit card from Bank of America. Which got me thinking, why are debit cards so bad? Where out of my five years with all my cards, I've only used debit cards a handful of times. Well, I think there are five big reasons why debit cards are subpar to their credit card counterparts, followed by a couple of reasons why I still keep one card around. Number one, credit score. Now, most of the world today runs on credit and debt, where even if someone had all the money to buy something, they would rather borrow money to pay for the item and pay reoccurring interest on that instead. But that interest rate itself could mean thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars, depending on how good your credit score is. The most common example of this are mortgages, where just a couple of years ago, you could lock in mortgage rates at just 3% meaning people would much rather borrow that money and pay the interest and put the money they could have used into the market instead to earn them on average 7 to 10% returns, which would more than cover the interest and have more left over. But in order to get the best rate, your credit score is by far the most important aspect your banks or credit unions look at. Have a score in the five to six hundreds and you might be paying tens of thousands of dollars more than a person with scores in the seven to eight hundreds. For example, just a 1% difference in mortgage rate could mean a difference of over $200 a month or over $70,000 over the lifetime of the loan. And that's why you wanna do your best to build and maintain a high credit score by building habits around the five elements of your FICO score, which credit cards help with. Now, there are a lot of tips out there to maximize your score, but some important ones include paying your bill off on time and in full every single month which would target the largest portion of the score of your payment history at 35%. Then you want to keep a low amounts owed or credit utilization, meaning you spend only a small fraction of your overall credit line. Say you have $10,000 of credit limit across all of your credit cards. You want to stay below 30% or $3,000 of that, or even better, below 10% or $1,000 of that. And after that, just keep your cards open as long as possible because that affects the 15% portion of the length of your credit history, which is why there's almost never a reason to close no annual fee cards because it doesn't cost you anything to hold on to them and they will help contribute to your average length of credit history. All of these aspects are things that credit cards will help you with, unlike debit cards, because on those, your money is actually taken out from your account and given to the receiver right away. There's no concept of borrowing money and then paying it off. So banks don't have a history to look at and it doesn't help you build your credit score. Safety and fraud. Despite alerts and warnings being set up in case there's any suspicious activity on your accounts, fraud in general is still at an all time high with almost 400,000 cases reported in 2021 alone, ranking it the second highest type of identity fraud. But depending on whether you're using debit cards or credit cards, your experience in trying to fix the issue could vary drastically. When you're using a debit card, you're actually immediately taking money out of your account and then giving it to the receiver. So trying to fix the issue means you're trying to get money back that has already left your account wherever that is. Whereas with credit cards, you always have that 30 day buffer where if you notice anything wrong, you can just mark that as fraud, get it taken off your account before you even have to spend money paying it off. So that amount never leaves your bank account in the first place. And that's my first hand experience when I had a few fraudulent charges a few years ago of different rental car payments and Instacarts halfway across the country. Having noticed this, all I did was call up Chase and within five minutes got the charges taken off my account and then they do their own investigations on the side. I never heard of any follow up so I'm sure it was clear I wasn't trying to scam them or anything. And even if you check the articles from the FTC, it's clear that there's more leeway and fewer potential issues if you get fraudulent charges on your credit cards over debit cards, where the maximum you could be responsible for for credit cards is only $50 
whereas on debit cards, you could be responsible for everything if you let it drag on long enough. But hey, maybe you're the lucky person that has never had a fraudulent charge. But even then, credit cards provide way more security than debit cards do with consumer protections. Whether it be giving you a whole nother year of warranty on your iPad, or accidentally having your earphones stolen or lost, using credit cards could give you a whole host of protections that can prevent you from having to shell out thousands of dollars to replace these items. Like purchase protection, where on the Chase Sapphire Reserve will protect you up to 120 days against damage or theft, up to $10,000 per claim. That means if you end up buying a maxed out MacBook Pro and then had it stolen from your bag, you can charge the whole thing to Chase and get credited that full amount, all without having to purchase extra warranties or Apple protections. Or maybe you shop online a lot and can never find the right size, or like shopping sales but hate not being able to return items for final sales, just like Lululemon with their made too much sales. Well, with return protection, within 90 days, you could claim the item with an issuer like American Express to get up to $300 per item back as long as you can prove the retailer won't take it back. And from first-hand experience using this service a few times in the last year, it's as simple as filling out a few forms and waiting a few weeks. A lot of these useful credit card protections aren't limited to high annual fee cards too. Even cards like the no annual fee Chase Freedom Flex card comes with cell phone protection, which covers up to $800 a claim for theft or damage, giving you that peace of mind. And who can forget about foreign transaction fees? Because unless you like shelling out 3% on every foreign charge, then you'll want to keep your spend on cards that have no forex fee, which are way more common on credit cards than they are on debit cards. Travel perks. Spending on or even just having different types of credit cards can save you money and elevate your experiences through different perks, benefits, and services that come with these cards. Not only are you covered if your trip is canceled or interrupted, delayed for more than a few hours, or have your luggage lost during your trip, you could even be covered for primary rental car coverage and emergency services, which can easily be upwards of $30, $40 a day if you paid out of pocket. But given that credit card companies make so much money off interchange fees or card fees, the users benefit too. For one, you could be getting gold or platinum status at different hotel chains, which could give you breakfast, lounge access, and regular upgrades whenever you stay at their properties or book through one of the credit card issuing portals. This is exactly how I was able to save almost $900 on my trip to Vegas using perks like the Caesars Diamond and MGM Gold to American Express's Fine Hotels and Resorts program and their travel credits. Also, from time to time, you may need to set up deposits for hotels or other travel needs. In those cases, credit cards might just be the requirement. If not, you would need to set aside a certain amount of money in your account for this deposit, whereas on the credit card side, it's just holding a certain credit limit. And if all those points weren't enough, one major draw for credit cards are all the rewards you get. Even if you don't care about maximizing your return or going on luxury travel, you rarely see debit cards even giving basic cash back. Because with credit cards, my golden rule is you should always be getting at least 2% back on all of your spend because there are so many free options to help you meet that target. That alone is something debit cards struggle to meet. But if you did want to go even further, there are plenty of ways to maximize your return on your spend, usually through earning points instead of cash back, and then redeeming those points in one of several ways to give you way more than the 2% cash back target. That said, there are a couple reasons why keeping just one debit card around can be useful. I mean, one is if you ever need cash, that's your card to use at ATMs to get physical cash. Personally, I only use physical cash maybe a couple times a year, but there are certain places that still need them, so it's good to keep handy. Then there are taxes or other kinds of bill payments. Because credit card companies charge higher fees for merchants, 
Some places will only take direct deposits like ACH transfers or debit cards for a lower fee than credit cards like the IRS. In these cases, you could consider debit cards, especially the rare ones that do give you a little bit of rewards like the American Express debit card, which goes to show how important it is to choose the right card, even when it comes to debit cards. Because my choice of debit card that lives in my wallet is the Charles Schwab debit card because of its unlimited ATM fee reimbursement worldwide, which is helpful during the times I'm back in Canada or I'm traveling abroad, especially in places like Japan, where it's still a very cash heavy society. And given that the exchange rates when taking cash out from this card is pretty much as good as you can get. So go ahead and watch this video for one of the best debit cards you can get today, or this video for some of the top credit cards this year. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.